Princess Margarita Stuart of royal lineage was born at a pivotal moment, right as the alliance between Scotland and France was solidifying against their common enemy, England. The union of this Scottish princess and the French Dauphin was of paramount importance to both nations. Marriages among the nobility in the 15th century were primarily based on diplomatic considerations and many of these unions proved to be quite successful. However, Margarita's marriage did not bring her happiness. Her husband, the Dauphin Louis, had little affection for her and treated her with chilly indifference. While the prince himself refrained from unkindness, he did nothing to prevent his close associates from spreading malicious rumours about Margarita. Born in 1424 in the Royal Edinburgh Castle in Scotland, Margarita Stuart's ill-fated marriage to Lua might be partially explained by the environment in which she grew up. Margarita's father was James Bermond, the King of Scotland, and her mother, Joan Beaufort, a cousin of the English King Henry VI. They were a rare couple for their time, having married for love. The princess's parents first met in England when James was held in captivity there. The English treated the captive King of Scotland with respect, even allowing him to attend balls and gatherings. It was at one of these events that romantic feelings blossomed between James and Henry Fee's niece Joan. The marriage between Joan and the King of Scotland was advantageous for Henry during those times, so he consented to the union. Constantly observing the example of her parents, Margarita perhaps believed that such should be the nature of the relationship between husband and wife. Therefore, she was unprepared for the cold, calculating, politically motivated marriage into which she entered as a princess. James Y and Joan Beaufort were married in 1424, and just a year later, the smitten couple welcomed their first daughter, whom they named Margarita. Subsequently, Margarita's mother gave birth to five more daughters and two sons. Very little information about Margarita's early years has been preserved, but it is known that from her earliest days, she was considered a desirable bride, and her parents actively sought a suitable match for her. In 1428, King Charles VII of France sent suitors to Scotland with a proposal to betroth the two-year-old Margarita to his elder son, five-year-old Louis. James I pondered this and agreed to the engagement. Until the age of 11, the French Dauphin's betrothed resided in her parents' castle. In 1436, she set sail for France on a ship, where her marriage to Louis was to take place. When Margarita arrived in France, she was greeted with immense honour. Louis's father, King Charles VII, was exceptionally pleased with the arrival of the princess. The French monarch made a great effort to receive his future daughter-in-law at his court with warmth and friendliness. However, the same could not be said for Prince Louis himself. From his childhood, the future Louis V, known as the Prudent, grew up as a pious, ruthless and extremely cautious individual. France, at that time, was in a challenging situation. During the Hundred Years' War, the English had captured significant portions of the country. From his early years, Louis maintained strained relations with his father, the king. The prince regarded his father as a weak leader and consistently accused him of incompetence in achieving military victories. Each time his father faced a setback, Louis asserted that he would have certainly secured victory in that battle. The prince was also deeply dissatisfied with the fact that he had been betrothed at a young age without his consent. Louis believed that if his father had been more daring, France would not have had to seek a bride for the sake of a military alliance. He did not refuse to marry Margarita, but he always felt that he had been coerced into the marriage against his will. When Margarita arrived in France, the prince received her coldly. In welcoming his bride, Louis performed all the necessary formalities, gallantly greeted Margarita and even embraced her as required by French tradition. Nevertheless, Louis conducted himself with detachment and arrogance, making it evident through his demeanor that the ceremony was a burden to him. Margarita and Louis's wedding took place the day after the princess's arrival. 
Scotland, unlike France, was a relatively wealthy country during those times, and James I made sure that his daughter looked resplendent at her wedding. According to the accounts of contemporaries, the beloved 11-year-old Margarita appeared at the wedding like a finely dressed doll. Everyone found the princess to be beautiful and charming. In contrast, Lewis appeared at the celebration with a dissatisfied countenance, and as witnesses recounted, he even looked older than his years out of anger. The groom's father, Charles VII for his part, attended the ceremony unkempt in riding trousers and without removing his spurs. All of this caused displeasure and murmuring among the Scottish guests. The wedding feast, following the church ceremony, lasted only a few hours. Afterward, all the guests were escorted out of the hall and sent to their designated rooms. The noble Scots, who had expected to revel at the royal wedding for at least several weeks, were shocked and outraged. The princess's attendants concluded that the French had somehow shown them disrespect. However, in reality, Charles had no intention of showing any disrespect. The alliance with Scotland was of utmost importance to him. The brevity of the ceremony was solely due to the financial difficulties faced by France at that time. Lewis's wedding was precisely as extravagant as his father could afford. After Margarita and Louis's wedding, they were examined by physicians. The doctors determined that it was too early to consummate the marriage, and thus the bride and groom were advised to live separately for a while. Margarita was sent to the women's quarters of the palace, where she continued her education. Meanwhile, Louis, accompanied by his father, embarked on an inspection tour of the fiefdoms under their control. During this trip, Charles officially declared his already married son as the Dauphin. Consequently, Margarita assumed the title of Dauphin. At the French court, the Scottish princess didn't feel entirely comfortable. In her father's castle, Margarita was accustomed to luxury, a level of comfort that impoverished France couldn't offer. However, she received an excellent education in her husband's country. In France, for instance, her talent for writing poetry blossomed. Margarita quickly mastered the French language and even effortlessly composed ballads in it. As the princess, whom everyone at the French court had once called a doll, grew older, she transformed into an exquisite beauty with delicate facial features and an enchanting figure. However, neither her talents nor her beauty could capture the attention of Louis. Initially, recalling the example of her parents, Margarita attempted to improve her relationship with her husband and create a warmer family atmosphere. But soon, the Dauphine realized that seeking love and affection from Louis was utterly futile. Louis did not share Margarita's passionate enthusiasm for poetry, and despite her beauty, he remained entirely indifferent, surrounded as he was by a bevy of favorites. Recognizing that she couldn't win her husband's love, Margarita increasingly found herself taking her father-in-law's side in conflicts with Louis, further estranging her from the Dauphin. Besides her amiable relationship with her parents, there was another reason why Louis expressed discontent toward her. When the couple was allowed to live together as they matured, Margarita was still a very young and delicate girl. According to the accounts of contemporaries, the Dauphine was terrified of becoming pregnant, which was not surprising, as history is replete with examples of young noblewomen perishing or severely compromising their health due to early childbirth. Legend has it that in an effort to avoid pregnancy, Margarita, between the ages of 13 and 15, began to regularly consume green apples and drink apple cider vinegar. At that time, it was believed that such actions could prevent conception. Louis was aware of Margarita's fear and her love for apples, which greatly angered him as it indicated her unwillingness to bear an heir. The prince's associates, much like himself, treated the Dauphine with coldness and at times even disrespect. Eventually, Louis's friends even began to spread unflattering rumors about Margarita concerning her virtue and her reputation as a woman. Margaret herself inadvertently provided a reason for such gossip. There's a legend that suggests that once, 
while walking in the garden with her ladies-in-waiting, the Dauphine spotted the poet Alain Chartier asleep under a tree. Approaching the poet, Margarita kissed him. This action surprised and shocked the ladies-in-waiting, who began to whisper disapprovingly. Seeing the household's reaction, Margarita explained that she had kissed not a man, but lips endowed with poetic talent. She also added that her name would now go down in history alongside the poets. Modern scholars believe that such an event never actually occurred. Perhaps Margarita did kiss a poet, but it certainly wasn't Alain Chartier. The fact is that when Alain passed away, Margarita was only about six years old. In any case, Louis himself did nothing to defend his wife and allowed his friends to spread malicious rumours about her. This deeply distressed Margarita and her attendants often observed her in a state of sadness. In late summer of 1445, the 19-year-old Margarita joined the pilgrimage of the French court to a monastery near Paris. The weather was scorching and the princess became severely overheated in the sun. Upon returning to the palace, Margarita hurried to change into lighter clothing in her cold stone chamber. This decision proved fateful for the Dauphine. The next day, she developed a high fever. In the morning, Louis's friend, Jacques de Tellin, entered Margarita's room. He had been sent by the Dauphin to invite his wife to a celebration. However, Margarita couldn't attend the Grand Hall. She was delirious and in terrible condition. When Margarita saw Jacques, she felt even worse. Thelen was one of the nobles who had initiated the spreading of rumours about her. Upon noticing her tormentor in the room, Margarita began to cry and passionately accused Thelen of slander and killing her with his words. Unmoved by this, Thelen didn't even consider apologising to the ailing Dauphine and simply turned and left with a cold and haughty demeanour. In the hall, upon rejoining his friends and Louis, Thelen referred to Margarita as the deranged princess. Meanwhile, Margarita's condition worsened. Thelen's visit had devastated the princess. Margarita sank into depression and stopped resisting her illness. Some of her ladies-in-waiting tried to console her, urging her to rally and live. Yet, according to legend, Margarita responded with, I care not for life. Speak to me no more of it. On the seventh day of her illness, Margarita's condition deteriorated sharply. Attendants called for a priest and sent a servant to fetch Louis. Despite his lack of affection for his wife, records suggest that Louis was indeed present during her final moments. On August 16, 1445, Margarita passed away in chalon sur marne having faced many misfortunes and never having become the Queen of France. <laughs>